Well, hello there. It's the Sour King himself. <laughs> All right, Governor. Oh, yeah, I'm very well, thank you. I'm two sours in. I'm a convert already. <laughs> and, I mean, and I hear your wife doesn't particularly like them, right? I, I thought she would, and um, I took her the one that was on Instagram the other day from the London Beer Factory and said, oh, sip this, you know, Marco's got me into these. The ref over there has been suggesting I get into them. And after the special last week, uh, she took a sip, was very hopeful that it would be nice and yeah she did not like it one bit <laughs> just pulling a couple of faces or what it was just not for her did you mean what the fuck is this shit <laughs> that was her review so um yeah not a fan but I, I i like them so yeah that's great i'm happy for you I'm glad. and then the then the brew that i've got tonight isn't a sour but um okay the, the company that uh the brewery they are they have sours as well which is great to find out oh brilliant brilliant uk brilliant. uk uk yeah well that's good um i yeah well you will see shortly on mine but i've moved a little bit away from the sours tonight but hey welcome dre barrels to your weekly podcast of the dre men so Yo, ho ho and a bottle of rum <laughs> or a bottle good. of stout maybe oh, oh maybe oh, oh let me just have a stretch here a minute yeah, hey what hang on a minute what that is that t-shirt ah. you're wearing today um oh, hey, have they come in? this old thing <laughs> have they come this in hey yeah they've come in the prototype there's only a prototype see what it looked like but uh yeah they come in <sighs> well I say a prototype. I've got 20 of them sent to me from Asia. Oh, hard be nipples. A bit Ooh, rude. Um, yeah. The, the Draymond's logo. Uh, only on a white T-shirt. There's plenty of other colours and a couple of other designs in the pipeline. But um, no, very, very happy with them. Maybe could be a little touch higher, but I'm not standing up, am I? So you can't really see. But no, oh. it's, uh, it's thick and fast. Um Okay, guys so, in South um, the guys in South Africa um, for that football team that are interested in supporting us, they they might even put it on their training kit. So that'd be a bit of a laugh. And you know, there's a Lions tour in South Africa this year, so maybe we can ship some to the rugby fans down there as well. Oh, you always have to turn it back to rugby. You should be saying, "Oh, thank you very much to the guys from South Africa." And, uh, <laughs> But no, it's straight back to the rugby with you, isn't it? Well, but yes, who knows? Who knows, Mickens? Who knows? Maybe uh, it'd be worldwide by then. I hope so. And I do actually appreciate that they've put the Instagram uh, hashtag on there as well. Yeah, um, well, I mean, we're on all media platforms, aren't we? I mean, in Asia, we're on the on that slightly different one, the Friendster and things like that. But yeah, uh, Instagram is really our home, I would say. I think so. That's where you find our just everyday kind of stuff. But yeah, and link go... to it, and and all our links to everything else we do, the podcasts and um, tours and things that are coming up in the future, um, especially yes. next week. Pubs are opening over here next week. You can go in them. Dreaming on yeah. tour. Ooh, chalk it up. Oh yes, please. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be exciting because it's been a long yeah. time coming for you guys over there. So brilliant and i'm going to get out a few of these smaller breweries around here and once we are properly allowed to integrate as normal then um, i want to get the feel for a place when it's full throttle rather than restricted so i'm holding back and once that happens i'm going to visit a couple of these breweries and do a couple of live spots from there a couple of interviews with people and brilliant. you know what we started over here get it rolling further and further along Definitely, and obviously you'll be wearing the T-shirt when you go out to these breweries and just to promote what we're doing, right, and spread the word. Well, and, if, like, if there's a lot of people there, might even get one of those T-shirt cannons that they have at the baseball and stuff and fire them into the crowd. <laughs> oh, oh, that'd be <laughs> oh, that'd be We have, um, not, not that, you know, we're being sexist, but... Uh, it's a vest top, which is more suited to the women. That's also come through. Okay. My wife's been sporting. So, uh, yes. So unisex t-shirts out there 
for dray barrels yeah down the exactly. line and yeah. maybe a bra in the future with one head here and one head here and who knows i want to see the only this start. <laughs> <laughs> it is it's the start of match merch as they say oh match, that's match a bit of merchandise merchandise anyway so all right do you want a bit of news or what a bit of, a bit of barrel apparel oh, i like it i like hey? it dry barrel apparel shock it up oh you're <laughs> quick off the mark there governor <laughs> it can it flows so naturally to you it just well, goes over my my uh shiny head most of the time but there we yeah. go <laughs> there we are, but i understand i can hear something in the background what is that he's got some beer news for you oh he was a bit slow today wasn't he to hotel so <laughs> how Duckworth himself. Oh, Duckworth, yeah, D Terry, Terry Duck. Um, okay, so this was a bit of interesting news from this side of the pond this week. Um, uh, so what they're doing, because I don't know if you've heard, vaccination rates have dropped recently, um, probably in the last week or so. So they're offering free beers through May to help the lagging uh, vaccination rate. So, oh, you mean like the take up of people getting vaccinated? Exactly. And so what they're doing. Well, so they're going to say, you come along, you can have a free beer if you get vaccinated. So we, this is basically happening in uh, Erie County, New York right now. Uh, so it's turning the bars into uh, come to the bar, get vaccinated with the Moderna vaccine, which is what I had. And you get a free beer for your vaccination. And oh, what? What? Isn't that brilliant? And it's probably really useful for the the brewery as well. So I'll tell you what I got, and it was a lovely treat. I had my vaccination. I had the AstraZeneca, Oxford AstraZeneca. I got a sticker. <laughs> Just like when you used to go to the dentist. Have a look at that. That's great. Little sticker. I was so proud of it. I first, like that. first sticker I've had for ages. Don't get them at the dentist anymore when you're our age, but it says I've had my COVID vaccination. And he's oh. actually got it on his phone and it's a little heart, right? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. For the guys that are listening. Yeah. It's a little heart with a little crown in the middle of it. And uh, and, it, and I'll get another one when I have my second. Oh, oh. brilliant. And hopefully you get it. I didn't back. even offer it to any of my kids. I thought, that's fucking mine. <laughs> for me. <laughs> nobody else and uh, um i guess you'll also get the essential vaccination passport as well not just a sticker just to prove you've had it no i ain't got nothing like that over here really how strange we have a little um it's a the cdc um they give you a bit of paper and you have your first shot dated and your second shot oh dated. right i thought you meant yeah i've got this little card here yeah 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 the same thing yeah, similar to that. Oh, yeah, and it just gives you dates and just it's just to show and prove, you know, because you, you you know places are going to be asking for that. Yeah, and now I, I had mine in a little place by the sea, so that was quite nice. Oh wow! In fact, it was in the uh, Westwood Ho, which we were talking about either last week or the podcast before. So we were, yeah, very rare name, the only place in the world, I believe, with the exclamation mark at the end, right? And it's its name. Correctamondo. That's brilliant. But anyway, this this brewery is called Resurgence up in New York. Um, so I thought it was kind of cool, but I actually did a bit of homework on the brewery itself um it's a microbrewery out of buffalo new york and if you look in into beers from them they've got they kind of specialize in ipas mostly so they've got a few ipas by the look of it so um, i'd be probably picking one of those um for my vaccination uh pint and they also do a sponge candy stout as well so i'm going to try and see if i can find some of their beers surely surely they've all missed the trick and they should just be handing out free bottles of corona oh shit <laughs> i know a special, a special 19 edition <laughs> Would, but wouldn't it help promote the 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 company itself because probably i don't know if i'm speaking from my ass here but corona beers and coronavirus do you think it has had a negative impact on the beer itself <laughs> It did over here for a bit, yeah. 
it, there was places that were selling Corona uh, lagers for a lot cheaper than usual because people were just not buying them. That's serious. You know, That's human serious. nature is, oh, it's got that in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're tough, aren't they? They're oh. tough. It's not my favourite drink anyway, Corona. People go nuts for it. I think, oh, I've got to stick a lime in the neck of it. Oh, fuck off. Well, we used to, um, yeah, no, we used to always, when we used to go up the club at the Valley, the non pole club, they, they didn't really, I think they had Corona, but everyone used to go for the Sol instead of the Corona. It was a Corona Sol and they do the same thing with the lime, you know? Yeah, I can't have lime. It makes my mouth go funny. So I, I don't like that shit anyway i like i do like mediterranean beers and things but i don't like sticking a lime in it you can't drink it proper or anything i don't think they do that here maybe it's just over in britain but I, apparently i heard i don't know if this is true sorry corona they piss in the corona bottles in mexico before they ship them to america i've heard maybe it's um uh what you call it an urban myth <laughs> i think it's that color though isn't it well, I forgot. Well, I forgot. Corona is from Mexico. Yeah. Yeah, but do you, I mean I don't know if that applies to the UK. Do they ship it to America before they ship it to uh, uh, Blighty? I don't know, but there we go. It's interesting. Well, if they do do that, then maybe that's how it spread around the world. <sighs> Possibly. Anyway, uh, get, get a pour on. Oh yeah, I thought you'd never stop. <laughs> now I'll go. I'm going to show you what I've got. This was one of my. Since it was my birthday at the weekend, and um, we've already mentioned that, and I put a little post out there because I was up the pub for a couple of beers on my birthday, which was lovely. Nice. Outside, obviously, um, I had a bevy of beers for my birthday from all different people. So I've got enough beers to review for a good few weeks yet. Some proper old English ones, some sours uh, from a good friend of mine, and stouts and all stuff like that it was lovely and marvelous uh, marvelous this is one from uh, that came with the sour set there was a couple of stouts in there and this is from the siren brewery or siren craft beer brewing broken dream breakfast stout I like the artwork yes well i've got a little a bit of information on the artwork uh, so there's your siren obviously a lady if everyone knows what a siren is that would lure the ships to crash on the rocks yeah it's mystery women of the sea well have a look at that i was reading about this earlier there's the s and their artwork is important because they say they don't want to be too brash with it they want to draw you in to look at it oh and it is it's very detailed when you look at that very yeah. sort of bit art deco ish but the s has got a barbed end, which means once you've had it, you're hooked. Oh, clever, clever. Clever little design, that. So, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a breakfast stout. I'm going to get the pour on. I like breakfast stouts. I've had a few of those. Ooh. Coffee aroma big style with this. Ooh. So they also do this version in a nitro stout uh, big can. This is just a little stubby fucker for breakfast. Uh, yeah. Um, a bit close to the camera since we've moved location. We've had a little change around in here. I noticed that. But, yeah, very nice. So there's the... Um, dark, very dark. It's the drink itself. Lovely head on it. Head's a big thing this year, isn't it? With the, with the, with the pictures we've been seeing on the internet. Well... Yeah, we've seen the coffee bit. aroma. I mean, that's what it is, coffee and chocolate. So let's have a look. Let's have a taste. Mm, so distinctive smell there of coffee. Oh, very rich. Very rich. Wow. I'm going to have another go. Hang on. Oh, it's nice to be back in stout country. <laughs> <laughs> Don't oh. you zigging and zagging there. Well, I know your mate Zig and Zaggy pops up every now and then, but yeah. you know, sours have been nice. I've drunk loads of different beers over the last week, but having a good stout. Oh. Can't beat it, can't beat it. So you're enjoying that? that I'm enjoying that. Let me go and wet your 
What your, your, oh. what your, what my appetite, get yours on the go. Yeah, absolutely. And then you can talk about yours. So I'm doing a strawberry lager today, keeping on oh. the summer theme. So strawberry lager, mate. Yeah, lager, get it down your neck. Um, I can't do the accent, obviously. Was <laughs> <laughs> that Australian? Good eye, mate. I start there again. <laughs> So I've got a traditional pint glass here, you know, we yeah, stand up with a pint glass and I'll just get this pouring into here and see if I can uh, better my head than, uh, eh, you don't get much of it. Strawberry head. wine, strawberry wine. Is that a song? By the band Strawberry Wine, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and then I got a second one. Oh. Just to make it a paint. Oh, so that's a lovely treat. I didn't have two of the same. Like I said, this come in a, a mixture. Otherwise, I would have grabbed it and joined you. Well, I thought, oh, you know, I'd going just... double cans two weeks running, folks. <laughs> two cans last week with the sours, different. But this week, he's got two cans of the same and he's poured himself a lovely looking pint there. Should it be an intervention? <laughs> oh, no. Have a sniff. I know you like to have a good old waft of it. God, grief, that is strawberries. I can smell the strawberries. Wow, that just smells fruity, rich and fruity. So um, let's get a who, taste Who's off. that? Huh? Who's that? A couple of your mates. Oh, <laughs> well, rich and oh, fruity. Rich and yeah. fruity. <laughs> you so, want to watch out for fruity after he's had, couple, <laughs> he's had a couple of lagers. <laughs> and he's a scaffolder as well fruity oh, yeah, watch out on the sites with him but yeah yeah go. he's got he's got what he's got hands everywhere that chap he does and he's a bit camp with them but there we go oh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry folks watch he's where you put your hammer he's... with fruity <laughs> <laughs> He borrows my yeah, he'll borrow Rich's hammer all the time out of his the two, but anyway, that's a different story. But well, zip yeah. at the front and at the back. <laughs> I'm, I'm, spoiling spoiling it it. But I'm gonna be quiet. Oh, that is gorgeous. Now we've Ooh. talked about lagers before and we used to drink them like crazy. I wouldn't call that a lager. I would just call it a fruity beer. Not a sour as much, but and obviously not a cider, but just something, or maybe a light cider or something like that, you know? And that is 4.2%. Um, I don't know what yours is. Um, Mine is um, <clears throat> mine's 6.5 for the breakfast stout, which is, yeah. um, you know, quite, quite up there for over here. We talked about it last week. You don't see many high percenters and... 6.5 is quite high for a little stout over here. Um, I'll give you a little bit of gumph if you want. Yes, please. Yeah, let's see what you got. Right. So uh, they've been going a little while, um, about 2008. But in 2013, the founder, Darren Anley, uh, decided to have a go at the craft brew market and um, set up Siren Craft Brew. Now, they're based in uh, a strange little place called Finchampstead, which is in Wokingham, which is in the county of Berkshire in England, which is about 50 miles east of London. Okay. So there's, a, there's a bit that joins London with Wales called the M4 Corridor. It's about halfway to Wales, just under and drop down to the left if you are south of that and you'll come across this place um they're a busy little brewery they really are they've uh, got quite a few beers on their website that i've seen and in 2019 alone they had 100 releases 100 yeah I mean, so they, they, they're always experimenting and trying new things but you know, a lot of these places go on about the finest ingredients. Well, they say that they only use the finest ingredients because otherwise, what's the point, basically? And they want to yeah. um, have the best people working for them sourcing these great ingredients. 
so they're doing well um like i said they they've got uh some beers um i'll list a couple while i'm talking about them we've got high definition ipa we've got yulu which is a pale ale they also do sours now they've got a calypso sour mm. and they've got one called send me sunshine with slim pickings no. um, but they've got quite a few different sours actually and yeah. they've got pastel pills um which is a lager and bones of a state bones of a sailor which is a stout stroke porter oh you've um, got to get one of those come on yeah. but they've got on their website they've probably got 40 or 50 different ones i just listed a bit um so, they are based funnily enough as you yourself have neighbors in california in cali uh the california country park is just over the lake from them oh uh, not a place i'd heard of before but when i stuck it on the map it come up california i wonder where that name comes from for them it seems a bit out of the blue maybe a californian set it up or well i don't know because a lot of places in england are have been you know there's a boston in england oh yeah new york there's obviously new york, york new york and then there's uh, Birmingham. california and i mean there's even a barnstable in in the usa but it's barn stable isn't it rather than yeah stable. yeah um, yeah, it is. But kind of, I don't know where the origins of California comes from. I don't know if it's something that came over there. Obviously, you've got places like um, the Deep South and Louisiana and New Orleans is is like old Orleans, isn't it, in, in France? But So that's yeah. that yeah. reference. The French Quarter and all that, yeah. Yeah, but California just seems so unusual and out of the blue to have a place called California in England. Well, yeah. just the park, I know, but it just doesn't you it doesn't strike you where but when you think of Boston and uh New York, you always think of like in English or British places. I think there's a Cardiff over here as well, I believe. I think there's a Cardiff in Texas. Is there an Ogmore? Oh no nah, no, I don't think so. That always sounded um Cornish to me, doesn't it? Mm. It sounds Cornish, Ogmore. Don't you think? Oh, okay, well, it was just me. <laughs> As well, sounds like Agua. Yeah, uh, maybe. <laughs> so, oh, that's interesting. So, how far? Let me ask you this though: is that a bit, is it that a bit of a trek for you if you went to Ber Berkshire? Well, no, I drive through the top of it, like on the M4 corridor, like I said. But oh. if I come off the M4, it'd probably like be twenty minutes south. So, okay, not, not that far away. But they, they're um. They're based on an industrial estate. Now, when I went on their website, which is good, really impressive, easy to navigate, um, they had this cool little YouTube video. And because um, a lot of people that go to their uh, brewery get the bus because there's a tap room there and they want to have a drink. So yeah. an industrial estate over here must be the same in America, but just to run past, it's got a lot of sort of big sort of warehouses that do different things like um yeah. you know a lot of uh cargo and uh logistical things run out of there and car places and things like that but it reminded me of america this one because um of the tap room which i'll get to in a minute but yeah there's a video on their youtube video and you click on it and it's got the guy at the bus stop and then you follow him walking along it's all speeded up telling you how to get to the brewery <laughs> so you don't get so you don't get lost and and then as he comes into the tap room brilliant the guy at the bar turns around and he places down a pint right perfect for him now the tap room it, it reminded me of a lot of the places i see in texas over there that um are on the instagram we follow and stuff obviously because you're in san antonio in texas that yeah it just reminded me of an american tap room all the taps behind the bar, quite a sort of industrial type of layout, higher chairs and things like that. It, it And it really reminded me of the places that you sometimes go to and that. Um, 
it but is pretty like cool that. place to go to they're open a few days a week at the moment it's only outside but as of next week they'll be open again um but yeah really really sort of cool little place what about your one where's your one based oh yeah sorry um so uh it's called abita brewing company um and they are in uh, new orleans actually or just north of new orleans um oh, so, right, that, sorry, yeah. <clears throat> so that is louisiana which is where i am in texas it's, it's more east and south so it's right on the coast if you don't know where new orleans is um so they are uh, they've been brewing since 1986 so they're pretty well established and they've been out yeah. for some time so <clears throat> they produce 160,000 barrels of beer annually um so they do have a wonderful let me have a look here they've got a great tap room at their location in louisiana and it's updated quite recently so they are open but they they're not doing tours right now so their standard hours are monday through friday and yeah. sunday so they're open full time um but basically they they are just your typical kind of thing they um they just want to make good beers good tasty beers you know um they've got a great website if you're interested, have a look. They've got this cool little feature that you can upload photos if you've been through Instagram or to the website itself. So you've got this little montage of people drinking uh, of the tap room. Yeah, not not a video, but you, it just kind of scrolls across the screen. Uh, so it's cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Good, good. But what I liked about this brewery, um, like you've talked about a lot there, Governor, is um, how green they are. So they have a big green ethos about them. So they're kind of committed to preserving the environment through conservation and resources. All their stuff's really, um, everything is recyclable. Um, and oh, they're kind of set in the piney woods north of New, New Orleans. It's a very nice kind of um, place for wildlife and such. And what do they say? Protecting and improving the environment, responsible, responsible. Oh, conserving energy and water by reusing byproducts and waste. So reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Oh, that's a bit like that Budweiser scheme, wasn't it? I was on about, was it that? Where they were yeah. in the beer? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I remember you talking about that through Budweiser. That was in your news, right? You were talking about that. Um, yeah. Yes, you're correct, correct. If I recall. <laughs> but yeah, driving greener vehicles. So I guess all their vehicles that they do for deliveries and such like that are sustainable. I'm guessing they're electric. I don't know. But there's a lot of gumph on here, um, powered by beer energy. There's loads of stuff, biogas. They talk about all that. Um, yeah, stimulating. Yeah, it's, it's great all these companies are... Uh, you know, if if every brewery around the world reduced it a little bit, then overall that's quite a lot, isn't it? You know, they're really thinking a lot of places are switching their delivery vans to electric and things like that. So, definitely you know, good, good on them. It's it's a big move, isn't it? And I saw David Attenborough this week talking about there's some big summit going on and how it's just all a big right step in the right direction. So. Hopefully we can save our planet. Who knows? Obviously, me and you went to college to do conservation, so it's always in the back of our minds. So yeah, it's a big, yeah. it's a big ethos there. So yeah, it's kind of cool. I, I if I ever get down that way, I will definitely check them out. I know we want to go down to New Orleans at some point. It's definitely on the bucket list. Yeah, on the bucket list of 5,000 places to go. <laughs> Urban Street. Well, a lot of it, it's not that far, really, for us. It's, um, well, I, in the scheme of things, it's like probably driving to Scotland or somewhere like that. Oh, yeah. So it's definitely achievable. And I know a lot of people here, a lot of my friends have been to New Orleans because it is much more accessible than, like, going to California or New York or something like that. So... Yeah, um, it's cool. I'd like to go down there. Like, um, 
Mardi Gras or whatnot. And Bourbon Street is the big street there, I think. Uh, and you've probably seen photos where they're all on the streets and the bars are just mm. spilling out into the street and it's just packed. It's just absolutely packed. And obviously the jazz music and the blues yeah, and all yeah. that. So. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah. Now, it's one of those places that you'd love to go, but for me, it's uh, if I came to America, it, I wouldn't want to go there first. So, you know. What is well, on you? Probably, oh, obviously San Antonio. <laughs> but after that. <laughs> it's the Alamos in San Antonio, isn't it? It is, yeah. Remember the Alamos. You know Ozzy Osbourne pissed up there. Yeah. No. <laughs> you know, he's got a lifetime ban. It's, it's weird because Ozzy Osbourne is just not welcome in San Antonio. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Phil Collins got the keys to the city. It's just like when pop star and when rock star he's like uh because he donated phil collins donated he's obsessed with the alamo phil collins and he don donated so much stuff that he's collected over the years that is on display there you know in the museum the um, he pissed that bit <laughs> oh i couldn't find the toilet <laughs> well when you think about it we've all been there haven't we it's like man if you're desperate and like you're down an alleyway or something you just gotta i'm um, let it i mean it, like, yeah maybe if he pissed around the corner but if it was at the front doors and stuff i mean come on it's a bit brazen isn't it but it's a bit much, isn't it? Fucking <laughs> <really can. laughs> uh, anyway i'm going to tell you what they say at the end of this okay. website about yeah you. yeah They've said whether you fancy a fruity, hoppy pale ale on a hot, sunny day or a unctonous, satisfying stout at the end of an evening, we've got you covered. Ooh. Read on to discover some of the beers that await or book a brewery tour and see where the magic happens. It's an impressive little site. I, so I let me think. ask you this. Are they doing brewery tours? Because like I said about our beta, they're not right now. Not at the moment, no, but they they will be. You know, it's we're allowed to do that sort of shit now over here. Okay, yeah. I mean, I saw over where you are. I was watching a boxing on the weekend when Canelo fought and Billy Joe Saunders from the UK. Um, they fought in front of 73 thousand inside in texas that's just nuts i didn't see that where where was that at oh shit houston no uh austin dallas i don't think so no um of oh, san antonio where is it? other cities uh el paso no i can't remember now anyway it was some somewhere in texas that's a big, big audience, so it'd have to be a big venue, right? Yeah, it was a big place, it was, and it was undercover as well. So they thought, and I just thought, wow, how, how can it be that you're that far forward? And then tonight they had the Brit Awards, the Music Awards on the telly, and they did have an audience in that. So it's slowly coming back. I think our government, after fucking up a couple of times, this slow approach of leaving is, is working. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We're seeing it everywhere. It's just the oh. variants, if these variants come into any of the countries, could run ravage. But, you know, I, I think know. a lot of people, if you've had the jab, you're, you're pretty well protected. So Unheard immunity, you know, people are starting to get out there more mix and just, and I, I kind of like that they are, I think most people, I mean, everybody I talk to have had it now. So it's like, but obviously they are people who haven't. There's one, there's probably two people in my organization that don't have it, but if you've got the herd immunity, you know, it, it works well. Yeah. So it's just the kids now, that's what we need to think about. And I did see the adolescents uh, starting to, um, they're, they're starting to do that now. So, hey, we're getting there. Um, well, yeah, it just depends on the kids, doesn't it? They need to do a bit more testing, I think. I don't want, yeah, you don't want to rush it, do you? I mean... No, you're right. Sorry, I've looked it up as we were talking. The AT&T Stadium in Dallas was where oh, they okay. thought. Okay, with a mobile phone, AT&T. Yeah, okay. so uh, probably, I, I thought it was somewhere else. I didn't think it was Dallas, but no, it's in Dallas. 
Okay, yeah. Big, big place for beers, yeah. Oh, that's cool. All right, so I'm going to just list a couple of my beers, if you don't mind, from this brewery, just to give a taster. Not at all. I'd love to hear them. Thank you, sir. So they, they do a lot of these lagers and fruit beers. So they've got one called a Purple Haze, um, which is a oh, fruit beer. Oh, right on, man. Cool, cool. Oh, Jimi oh, Hendrix man. and the Purple Haze. I bet Jez would like that one. Um, and they got, uh, I won't listen, uh, they, they do a Bock, so a European style kind of uh, German kind of Czech Bock, and that's called Andy Gator. That's kind of cool. Um, and that's all I had. I was a bit late to the party on their beers, but... Hey. Oh, they... Sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> You're tired? <laughs> what, am I boring you? Do I bore well, you, sir? Well, I'm not going to say anything on that front. No, I'm a little fatigued, if you like. What time is it? I'm 10 to midnight. Yeah, it's pretty but, late. Uh, no, um, All right. No, I think it's, uh, we found a couple of nice little places here. I hadn't heard of uh, Siren Craft Brew before. Um, there's a lot more breweries out there, especially with this craft scene, than... I fully appreciate it just for Britain. I mean, when you think that Britain is can fit into Texas like fucking 11 times or something stupid oh, like that. Yeah, um, absolutely. We, we've we actually got quite a few places, not so many of them near where I am. There are very localised breweries, but no, these craft brew places are doing really well, The um, it's, which is good to see. It is, it is, and, uh, you know, it's, like I say, everything's spread out here. So if you think about it in context, because they spread so much stuff out, I mean, it's probably equivalent to the UK, you know? It's like everything's so condensed there, mm -hmm. but you, you have to just drive to the pub. You have to drive everywhere, you know? It's not like you walk over to a brewery or then you could walk down the street to another one, like if you were in Cardiff or Newport or somewhere like that, or the pubs. How I mean, far is your local pub then? My local pub that I like to um, go to, which is the Winchester, is the English pub here. That would take me half hour, dri and that's driving. Um, there's nothing in walking <laughs> distance. What, what, what about the closest bar to where you live then? The closest bar, there's a burger joint at the end of this um, apartment complex where I'm at, and I could probably walk there in 15 what, minutes. What, they sell beers? They do sell beers, but it's more food, you know, it's not like... You know, the, yeah, so where's the closest bar? How far is the closest bar, even if it's a shit -out? Um, That is probably, let me think... Free Tales, which is a great brewery, and luckily I'm very privileged. It's 10 minutes down the highway by car. See, so, still a drive, isn't it? I mean, I can walk. Yeah. I can walk to my local pub that I was in on Saturday um, within about seven minutes, like six, seven minutes ambling along. And then See? if I was to run there, I'd get there in like 90 seconds or something like that. So we're lucky, you know, that we can walk to a pub. Do you remember and, when I lived in that? Only, then up the road, about 300 yards from there's another pub. So we're a bit lucky. We've got a couple nearby. It is. It is convenient. Do you remember when we uh, when I we lived in Pilton and then um, I moved to uh, Newport and my local was exactly the opposite side of town? So I used to walk from uh, Newport, essentially, all the way or the back beyond Newport, almost to uh, Swimbridge, not Swimbridge, Lanky, and walked all the way to Pilton and then back again. Or I'd drive and then walk back and pick up my car the next day. So how long a walk was that? That was fucking like half Lanky. Yeah, remember I was living in the caravan up at oh, the, fucking hell remember what, that if you, walked, if you walked from the caravan yeah i walked from that caravan over to the church when we used to frequent that establishment and well i mean i lived opposite that didn't i you did for a bit I, know. I, I could open the door and be in the pub within five seconds and then i great. and when i was in the 
the house seem closer it would be three seconds yeah right <laughs> no but i mean that would probably take you 45 minutes to walk i think it probably was so it just, it'd probably be quicker going to the brewery <laughs> walking actually for yeah, me right. But it just kind of goes to show if you love a place you make that effort and yeah i mean it is a shame there's probably i can think of five pubs in town that have shut maybe probably more like six or seven um since we've lived here that there used to be a weird little pub called the stag's head that you i'd sometimes go in to play darts and it was just you know a different bunch of people in there that's now house um few places like that it's sad really but yeah you know the price of beer is expensive and people buy, buy it and stay at home won't they if they can't afford to drink in a pub they do they do and it does seem that way that's the kind of the death toll for pubs in a way because more and more people do that these days which is such a sad shame and it just breaks my heart to see that but then it's weird because you go to other pubs like my local in wales is the mason's arms and it's always packed absolutely packed the brim you know and people are just dying to get in again um so it just goes to show it just depends and they they they're in valleys well yeah it's kind of the center point of like you come down three valleys the maestig valley there's fuck all the Ogmo <laughs> Valley and the and the Cum Valley, and you come down to bring Keth in, and there's this big old pub at the meeting yes. point. Hmm. Git. Uh yeah, Gittins. Yeah, <laughs> Git Git. Yeah, bring Keth in, and it's um it's just a hub, and people go for their Sunday lunches, big parties, and then they have the bar and the pub. There's a hotel as well. My oh, father that's lovely, isn't it? A lovely busy pub is brilliant. I love it. I love it. So anyway, we're probably to this uh, point of the podcast where it's... Who are you? It's Dregs of the Week. Oh, he it... loves drawing us to that. Oh, probably at that point, he loves that. <laughs> Somebody has to keep uh, <laughs> keep time. You know? Yeah, <laughs> keep, time keep hands on the wheel of the ship. Yeah. But yeah, my, my Dreg of the Week is, uh, is big business. Oh shit! Because I've only got a small one, so. No, no, no. That's what it is. Big business. <laughs> How they chew up and spit out smaller businesses. Oh, okay. That's interesting. It's just a personal drag. Um, okay. The skit, the place I was working for, an agency. Uh, were assured that our jobs were safe. Uh, and within a few days, the same assurances that we were given. Uh was just true proved to be a complete fabrication and uh 300 of us have lost our jobs so it's just the nature of it i'm on the arse end of it i know it happens all the time but you know when it happens to you and i've got to find another job now the young family and i knew this job weren't forever don't get me wrong but we were assured that we would probably be working on this project till april next year um if not definitely till september and uh it hasn't happened so to be in a zoom meeting where we've been told that we've been lied to by our parent company or our sub company if you want and 300 people lose their jobs on a zoom call was pretty fucking weird right. um yeah so i just take the fact that um big businesses you know thrive on cutting out good workers um the team i was on consistently achieved between 98 and 100 percent completion rates and it doesn't mean a fucking thing if they can employ people for really really cheap they didn't even the thing is they didn't even offer us the positions yeah they just got rid of us because we were too much money and and uh advertise the positions at minimum wage so it happens all the time. It's it just happens crazy. all the time. I'm just yeah. on the end of it and it's fucked me off. So it's crazy. I, I don't know I what's going to happen. But nah, it's, it's, it, you see, I mean, like um, I've always wo- worked for small companies, small businesses. I guess I'm lucky in that respect. But oh, I did work for Domino's once. Um, but that, yeah. was, that was a franchise. <laughs> but it's a big business. 
but it it kind of I mean you see it like Google and uh, Disney and stuff like that they all buy up these smaller companies a guy um, that works for us, um, Colin he won't mind me mentioning he listens to it but he said his wife got the company she worked for got bought out by Google or something like that but then they um, once he got bought out they started again the same company and Google allowed it or some weird shit like that so it's, it's strange so sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't I think but you do I mean you do it, it almost worries me at one day everything will just end up being under one company um you know like google and end up buying uh, Netflix that from Disney and... have you seen that film idiocy i don't think so no it's, no. it's fucking weird it's Is set it... in america in i don't know like 50 40 years from now something like that and something's happened and everyone on the planet is is thick is a bit stupid a bit dunce and they're trying to work out how to run the country and there's only one shop and it's something like one enormous costco or one enormous walmart and you just go into one shop and it's so massive that it would take you like age you know hours oh, to get it. yeah 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 and it sells absolutely everything but it's you know things like amazon and google yeah what what is that thing called it's called idiocy and there's a weird bit in it i've heard of it actually yeah if anyone's seen it then they'll know what i'm on about when he says i leave me alone i'm biting oh my god that's scary it, ma it makes you think does that how it'll end up because you're all like everybody's just like this uh i know what it is I know what it is, and they just yeah. press it, and there's no knowledge in the brain. They just press a button, the knowledge is there, and they read it and forget about it again. Whereas, you know, we're from a generation where we read up on everything. and Yeah, but then we're, we're only reading stuff that we're told is true. Well, that's true, from books. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's, you know, I guess when you think about it, that's, uh, what do they always say, you know, history's written by the conqueror so it's like we could be reading this stuff and it may not be true you know uh -huh. i don't know i mean it's it's, a, it's certainly a, a well isn't it wasn't it that um do you know how they marketed pearl harbor in japan probably they had, probably. To, they had um it was something like a a Japanese, obviously, one of the kamikaze pilots called it something he said, like one brave pilot. Oh, well, like compared to like a, a, a compared to like your yeah, like being attacked, obviously, in Pearl Harbor, it was an attack on the American base. But yeah, then they're, they're saying, oh, it was one, you know, one brave pilot started the kamikaze run. And then obviously they were, yeah. and it carried on. And it fucking weird. It's, it's like weird. how do they how do they teach World War Two in Germany? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, it's probably on my, our perspective because of relations now. But I don't. But we're getting very philosophical. If you're listening, Steve, you'll enjoy this. But we're kind of thinking about this. Stephen, you listening hard? <laughs> I hope so, Dre Barrel. Um. Anyway, I guess I'll just. Mal on my um uh, yes please drag if you don't if you okay with that oh amazon man's at the door <laughs> cheers amazon yeah, man. He's thank back. you he's, yeah. he's buying your company yeah <laughs> yeah oh maybe maybe go and get it buddy my little boy's gone to get it thank you sir anyway my drag actually relates to the door today oh i'm fucking oh. feeling um so i got home today right and um this is irked me if this this is hot off the press i and we got a recycle can and we have um a trash can and a recycle can rubbish bin if you will um but in our recycle bin and a recycling uh, bin yes yeah. <laughs> yeah, in, in our your recycling bin, go on. A recycling bin was a pair of shoes 
Oh, uh, you know what? So I, I, so somebody now keeping in mind we're in an apartment on the second floor, and there's a pair of shoes at the bottom of that. So somebody has come up here, or maybe it's neighbours next door, and put a pair of shoes in our recycling bin. What type so, of shoes are they? Uh, ladies flats, and they're just done they, in our rubbish they, bin. What, like, so, they're in they're in bad order, or um they look uh, okay but no my my drag in general if we're talking about are you shoes, sure are you sure that your wife hasn't ordered a pair of shoes because often i'll if, if we have a delivery here and we're not here they'll put a note through our door and they'll say we've left it behind your recycling bin or we've left it in your garage or something like that or garage and um garage yeah <laughs> i can't do the accent you can and uh and um so maybe your wife ordered a pair of shoes and they thought oh we can't leave them out where they can be seen we'll put them in the safety of their recycling bin no do you know what i'm thinking now no they weren't in a box or anything like that they were just loose i'm wondering if my wife threw them in there maybe they're a pair of her old shoes what do anyway. you recycle shoes like that I we don't have, well. we don't have, you was going on the other week about recycling and how shit it is in America. You recycle shoes by collecting them at the door? I think people just generally shove anything in recycle bins. Sounds like number nine, that does. The but one it's Oh, yeah. If, you, if you're a fan, watch that one. But there's just one shoe left. And it's possibly, it could be one of my favourite episodes of that, but how you get obsessed with the mystery of just one shoe. Why is it left there, you know? Why are these two shoes just being dumped in my bin? There's nobody else. Somebody would have to walk up the stairs and that's it. I do always wonder that, though. Like sometimes you're walking along and you see one shoe on a fence or on a wall and you think, all right, if it was a hat or a glove, you can understand you might have dropped that by mistake, but a shoe. <laughs> How the fuck has it got there? I know. It's just very, yeah, yeah, but a glove, yeah, but a shoe, you'd have to actually take it off, wouldn't you? Or actually bring it to the site in question to leave it there, which is a. I mean, surely the person that dropped the shoe. At some point, if they continued to walk, would come back to it would because they, they would they would walk, walk in, in a circle, surely, because they would slightly tilt one way, and they would continue to walk on that axis, if you like. It might yeah. take a few miles, and then eventually they would come back to it. They would walk in a circle and come back to it. Yeah, be like getting a stack, your foot stuck in a bag of cement, and you walk in and walk in, and it would guide you the other way because of the extra weight. But anyway, um, I don't know. I, I, it is a peculiar sight. It over if here. You we, got, if you got your foot caught in cement, would you just continue to walk then? How well, it depends. If I was lost, I'm. I saw an episode of One Foot in the Grave, and they were lost in the woods, and they, uh, he. She she got her, they both got their feet stuck in a bag of cement together, and they had to walk along together, and eventually it broke off. But wouldn't you at least try and just bang it off your foot, or try and break it, or would no, you just wait for help? I've thought about it. <laughs> I've given it a lot of thought. You have surely. Maybe I have to watch the episode to fully appreciate that. It's just bizarre, but. Yeah, that was just my work. And I, I'm just thinking back to when, like, have I done it or have I always been? I swear I've been, like, conscientious of walking past somebody's rubbish bin in the street and, like, throwing something in as I'm past. Remember back in the day, we used to drink on the street with cans and we'd walk yeah. through Cardiff with a can and just throw it in somebody's rubbish bin. But would that irk that person? Yeah, but um, well, the thing is that you're talking about a private set of flats, so someone or condos or whatever you call them over there, but someone Apart has me. come up and placed a pair of shoes, not just an odd one. Yeah, and they're not, you know, not in bad order. It's 
I think. Oh. Yeah, I'll look into it. I think maybe it's my wife. Anyway, uh, that's by and by. Let's have a rating because we're getting to Yeah, work. I will do. So let's knock that back last bit. It's nice. Siren Craft Brewing. I will try and search out a few more of yours. Um, for a stout, pretty solid. Um, I'll go 7.5. You know, I would drink it again happily, um, but it hasn't knocked my socks off. Not not really. Okay, that's a good route. It's a good stout. It's a good stout, just solid. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, great. Uh, mine is strawberry berry lager from Abita. Very enjoyable. It didn't, I, you know, I'll knock mine back as well. I didn't think of it as a lager, really. It was just so different to the lagers I've always had. It was very unique, and that's the standout point for me. Very smooth, very refreshing. So I'm going to go all out, you know, rating it in a lager context with an eight. I'm really right. impressed. So, yeah. I think I'm going to have to do a lager on the live one now. That'd be cool, you know, is inundated over there aren't you in lagers yeah, oh, i've got a little treater one i've got a little treater one i was going to have it in the jacuzzi the other day because i had jacuzzi for me birthday rented for a few days but the weather was a bit shite um rained a bit so i didn't manage to um get the photo of my said beer i want it to be a, a lovely sunny day to fully appreciate it so you and hopefully me sometime soon I look forward to that. That'll be fun. And uh, maybe we'll do a cider one coming up. And uh, we are doing a Eurovision one coming up. So look out. Fel- oh, yes. A couple of European beers. <laughs> Alice Claire. Ski school. Ski school. Oh, it'll be fun. You'll enjoy it, Dre Barrows. Look out. Um, and we will bid you a fond farewell and a very good week. Adieu to you, sir. You too. You too. And uh, and watch our podcast and our little mini ones. And we will see you next time. So, ta-ra. Bye.